Hey guys, how's it going today? Hope you're all doing well. I have seen recently one or two or 10 posts on Reddit about using rail signals correctly and how people need some help with that. So in light of that, today we are going to make a video about rail signals and how to use them. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be able to use them effectively in your bases. Let's go. Hey guys, all right, so here we are. We are in one of my maps and we've got some rail here and we've got a bunch of signals. Um, so first we're going to talk about the basic signals. Now if you grab your signal and you mouse over your track, you can see all the places that you can place it. And you can also see on the track there's a little white box and a direction. So that direction of those arrows is going to determine what direction your trains are going to be traveling. So if I put a rail signal here, for instance, okay, my, my train is going to be traveling north. I could also um, put another rail signal on the other side and you can see that there are arrows pointing south and this would allow for a double uh, a train going both directions on this one track you may want that sometimes you may not it depends on you know your use case but it is uh, possible now when we're putting these down you can see that this uh, right now we have this kind of turquoise color um, on our rail and when we put one down uh, now we have now we can see over here on the right hand side there's a lot of pink and on the left there's that little turquoise so what happens is that each uh, each time you place down a, a rail signal your rail gets split up into multiple blocks so we can put down another one here and basically what that means is that if my train is here you can see that this rail signal is red and what that means is that if a train were to be coming in this direction, it would say, hey, this rail signal is red, I can't go any further, and it would stop here. That way, you know, if you have a train here, it wouldn't, they wouldn't end up running into each other. Okay, so that's the main use of signals. And these are the basic signals. So basically, they just look at this next block. So you can see that um, the, the uh, turquoise part is going to look at that pink part and say, hey, is there a train inside that block? And if there is, then this signal here would be red. Same with this one. It's a little bit different with intersections, so let's put some uh, signals here. We're just going to put some down, okay? So what this signal here would, would say is that um, if there is a train in this yellow part in here, I'm going to be red, okay? So if there's a, a train currently in the middle of here, your train would stop here, okay? Now. That is all good and all, but what happens when you know you have complicated intersections where trains are gonna be crossing? Like, what happens, for instance, if you had a train here, like sitting here, stopped, waiting for something, let's say, and you had another train that was coming along this direction, doo -doo -doo, okay, and it wants to cross here, okay? You can see that this signal here is green. What that means is that if a train was coming and it wanted to go straight across, it would allow that, okay? So the train would end up coming through here and stopping. Now that might be fine, but what happens if you have other trains that are wanting to go this direction, you know, along this track? Now they're gonna get stuck because this train is stuck waiting for this train. So that's where we have what are called chain signals, okay? So on something like this where you're going to cross a track, right? you are gonna to wanna to put a chain signal. Now what a chain signal does is it looks ahead at the next set of blocks after the current block, right? So there's this pink block in here. It's gonna look past this pink block to see if a train would be able to go. Now you can see that it's blue, and you might be wondering why on earth is it blue? Well, there are actually two directions a train coming to this signal can go. They can come down this way, which is green right now, or they can go straight across. Now, if they're going straight across, right? If you have a train coming right now and it wants to go across, it's gonna come here and the chain signal is gonna look and say, hey, this block over here is taken, so I'm gonna stop the train here. And what that means is that, you know, now that you have a, now if you have a train coming south, it's not gonna have this other train blocking it. It's gonna be able to go all the way through the intersection just fine, okay? Additionally, if your train is coming through here, right, and it hits this rail signal, and it's trying to go south, like turn and go this way, 
it's going to be able to still because it's look this uh, chain signal is looking ahead to this signal and says, hey, it's green. And so it's gonna allow the train to pass through and go this direction. Now, if you have a train down here, you can see now that both of these blocks are taken. You can see that the uh, chain signal is red. And so what that means is that no matter what, you know, no matter what direction the train is wanting to go, whether it's straight across or wanting to come down, it's going to have to stop here because both of the blocks are taken up. Okay, so you can see this in action over here. So here we have a little bit of a train stacker for my ore trains, okay? And all the way up here, when they're coming in from the main line, you can see that there is a chain signal here that's blue. And what that means is that a train is allowed to pass through because there's open spots. And you can see here that this spot was open, now it's taken. And there's uh, more open spots down here, so you should still be able to come in down here because it's blue. Okay. And up here, you can see that these chain signals are all red. And this one's red, and this one's red. Basically, this means that a train cannot be in any of these blocks up here, right? It can't move from here into any of the blocks that are up this direction. So you can see there's this block and this block and this block. If there's a train in any of those three blocks, these trains can't move from here. And what that means uh, is that, you know, these trains aren't ever going to block this other train from leaving the station. It's always going to be able to leave the station. And then as soon as it leaves, then one of these can pull in. One of the other issues that you can run into is that your train doesn't have a path. Now, it might be confusing because you're thinking, man, I see a way for them to get there, right? But sometimes I've seen players have issues like this where they have a signal on the wrong side of the uh, track, right? And if I were to add some fuel here, right, and give it a station and put it on automatic, it's gonna get this no path error, okay? And this can happen not only with signals of being on the wrong side of the track, but also like no signals, right? So if you have a track and there's like one signal on the track and it just happens to be on the other side and you don't realize it and the train comes in here and then it wants to go back out, it can't because there's no bi-directional place uh, you know, for it to uh, go through. So sometimes a fix might be just adding a signal on the other side of the path. Now if I do this, it's going to find a path and it's going to run off, okay? But another uh, fix for you might just be finding, you know, like you might have to jump in your train, drive manually, and continually be checking your different signals to make sure, hey, can the train keep going here given how my signals are? like. Does it say, yes, I can go that direction on this track that I'm wanting to go on? And if the answer is no, then, hey, you found your issue and you can just, you know, put down the correct um, signal or get rid of the signals that are making the error in the first place. So I hope that kind of helps explain that because I know that there are a lot of times where I'm like, hey, I know that there's a path to where it's trying to get to and it's just not finding it. Why is it not finding it? Well, the issue might be, you know, some... Uh, rail signal that got put down accidentally like with a blueprint or something like that you didn't realize it and now you have to find that one signal that's messing everything up for you so just to be on the lookout for that that could be an issue that you could run into while you're working with rail signals okay and lastly for big intersections like this you can see there are quite a lot of signals and it might look a little bit overwhelming a bit daunting but here are some general rules when it comes to using a chain signal versus a regular signal, okay? You would use a regular signal before merging, okay? So you can see that this rail is merging here, right? And this one also is gonna be merging with this one. So you would use a regular signal for that. But if you're gonna be crossing another rail, right? So here, it's gonna be crossing this rail and this rail before it merges. And here, you know, it's gonna be crossing these three rails before it comes down here. In general, if you're crossing any other rails, you wanna use a chain signal. What this is going to do is it's going to stop your train from crossing those other uh, crossings and blocking uh, potentially other trains that are trying to get through. Okay, so if you're crossing, you want to use a chain signal 
And if you're merging, you want to use a regular signal. Okay. All right. And the last thing that I wanted to show is that chain signals actually chain together. So you can see here, this chain signal is looking at the next rail sig regular rail signal. This one though is looking at this chain signal. So these chain signals are looking at each other. And then this one is looking at this rail signal and this chain signal. Okay. So it's, it's not necessarily just looking at the next block. It's always looking at the next signal. So, or signals if there are multiple in this case, right? So one is green, one is red. And then this one only has this red one to look at. So it's going to be red as well. So you want to note that chain signals can chain together. So if you have in this case up here, you know, multiple intersections that you don't want your train to cross before it stops. So it's going to stop here because you've chained together all these signals. So if a train is in any of these blocks here, right? If any of these signals are red, it's going to stop here at this very first one. So chain signals are very powerful in that case, but they, you don't want to have them, you know, all over the place because as you're going on your straightaways, you want just regular signals so that trains can keep coming after each other. But the chain signals are amazing for uh, keeping trains from entering crossings where they shouldn't be. So I hope this explanation has helped you guys out. I hope you understand more about rail signals, chain signals, when to use them, and kind of what they would look like and what they do when you're using them. Um, if you guys have more questions on them, please post them in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Thank you guys for watching, and if you like this video, please consider subscribing. Thanks, and have an awesome day today.